Welcome back, everybody, to the AG Podcast. It's great to be here again. And by looks of Pastor Ryan wearing a big old sweatshirt, it is winter. It's getting about that it's time. It's getting about man. winter, or actually fall. These are the Summit sweatshirts. You can purchase those for $25. <laughs> $25, that's all. Yeah, come see me in my office. I have uh, all kinds of sizes, big and small. Well, you heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's a holiday discount. The holiday, yeah. I'm regularly 30. But and I'm the holidays <laughs> is what we'll be talking about today because yes. it is the end of October and we are about to approach the busy season for all of us, which is the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm. uh, a lot about to be going on in all of our lives. And yeah. so uh, we actually have uh, some questions about from you guys about holidays. Mm. And uh, here is a question about it. It says, the holiday season is coming up, and I always am excited when it starts, but then soon find myself exhausted and eager for it all to be over. Mm. Are there biblical principles that can help people like me stay grounded throughout busy seasons like Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yeah. I can't believe people get exhausted during the holidays. It just energizes me. Man. I can't believe people don't get exhausted yeah. during the I'm holidays. I'm like a little elf, you know? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. That's a great question. That's a great question. They say it's the most wonderful time of the year, but... I you, feel that way look, for about two weeks. Yeah. And you look I'm just around like, and everyone doesn't seem very happy. It's kind of like parents at Disneyland, you know? <laughs> they say that's the best place on earth, but you look around and people are mad at it's each for people other. people that don't have to pay for anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyways, so yeah, that's a great question. Um, holiday season's coming up. Exhausted. Tired. There is a lot that goes on during the holidays. I mean, you think about like family events, you know, um, plays at your kid's school, church things. It's easy to... Uh, get your calendar pretty busy. And well, cool. gr growing up in Carolina, what was like, uh, like, what did your family do that t made you tell yourself, okay, it's Thanksgiving. My family did this. Thanksgiving is here. Yeah. Or th not, and Christmas. We'd all go out into the woods and we'd shoot a deer. I'm just kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not really. Um, no, you know, is my, it bad that I believed him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until he like, said no. That's kind of that sounds yeah, reliable. Um, no, you know, I I, uh, I had a pretty big family and and they're super energetic and and I always loved like my favorite time of the year is like Thanksgiving because we would always kind of go around and and talk about you know kind of what we're thankful for and and spend time actually. Um, you know, giving thanks to God for the things that He is that He blessed us with, and it was it was really cool to kind of start that holiday season, kind of doing that. And um, and where when would you do that? Like actually at dinner? Yeah, or yeah, after so dinner in a circle? Kind of, How would you do that? Kind of before, you know, and, and it kind of you know speeds people up, so that way they don't talk too long, you know, mm -hmm. if you do it before dinner, you know. But no, we would go around and people would just say like what they're thankful for. And I just remember because we would always go to my grandma's house and my grandma lived in this like probably like thousand square foot house. It was super tiny. And there was like 20 of us in there and we're all this one long table that covers from the kitchen to the, to the living room. And we'd all get there and aunts, uncles, cousins, and everyone would kind of just talk about things that they were thankful for, uh, things that maybe God had done in their life that year. And I think it's I think it's good to do that to keep things in perspective because, I mean, goodness gracious, you leading up to Thanksgiving, leading up to Christmas, all those things is like you go go go, and then you, you actually don't pause to yeah. actually give true thanks, you know. And I just remember some of those memories of, of doing that, especially before my grandparents, you know, passed away. Some of those memories are still etched, you know, in my mind of mm -hmm. those times where they would talk about the things that they were thankful for at 70, 80 years old, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and as a kid hearing that, that was awesome to hear. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. from the Carolinas. Though. I don't know what y'all do in California, man. You probably... <laughs> Did you grow up with a tradition, Brian? A Thanksgiving tradition? Thanksgiving was almost always at grandma's house. Hmm. And same thing. It was, um, you know, just... My, I have a hilarious family. And so those are always the fun things. are just like listening to everybody just laughing the whole yeah. night, you know. And I have some uncles and... We're just like always just having everybody in stitches the whole night. Do you have a crazy uncle? Is there one? Um, everybody has a crazy uncle. Phil's probably the crazy uncle for his family. <laughs> no, but. No. Like, oh man, Phil's coming. It's still coming again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the crazy uncles actually don't come to Thanksgiving, actually. Okay. Yeah, we keep them out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. My bad. But, um,. You know, actually, we all stopped doing Thanksgiving. I, I don't even know why. It was when I was in high school. 
And then the last last year we got to do we like had like this big reunion because a, a lot of people moved away. That was that was it. People moved out of state. Mm -hmm. We were all like in one place for a long time, and then you know people move, and then one after the other. Um, but kind of that same thing of just like what's what's nice about Thanksgiving is that it's purposely designed to get exclusively the people that you that you love in terms of like family or deep friendships, and to bring them over a meal to just express. Uh, an evening or a day of just like I'm thankful for you people. I'm thankful for um, all God's done in my life, and so um, it's it's hard to do that during the Christmas season. You know, it's almost yeah. like Thanksgiving is like the mm -hmm. this little respite that you get of like I'm gonna just be enjoying these people mm -hmm. in this time because basically the day after that <laughs> is Black Friday. Yeah, it's on after that. At 4 a.m., I got to go wait in line at Target. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> to get that 70-inch TV. Yeah. What about you, Phil? You, uh, you know, growing up, looking back, I think for some reason it was usually at our house. Uh, I don't know why that was, um, but it was the same as what you guys are talking about. A lot of family, a lot of cousins, um, a lot of just um, goofing around, laughing. We laughed a lot, watched football, um, ate a big meal. <clears throat> but it was just, uh, it was probably the first time in the year that we were all together. Um, mm -hmm. um, for a while, we did like a, church, a family camp out where a bunch of us went camping together. Uh, but for the most part, it was just being together in, in our home. So it was always seemed relaxing. It always seemed fun. Um, and like you're saying, it wasn't part of Christmas is really different than Thanksgiving as far as as far as craziness. Um, yeah. So Thanksgiving was always fun. Have great memories of it. Uh, my mom always wanted to do stuff like what you're talking about, where let's all go around the table. Let's all share. Uh, but for some reason in our extended family, it, it never worked. <laughs> I'm not one, grateful or, for anything. one or two people would do it. And then. For whatever reasons, the communication broke down, and next thing you know, we're saying grace so we can eat and yeah. go on our way or whatever. But um, we had a good time. It's, time. it's hard to have the thankful circle before you eat. It is, but but it goes because everyone's staring at a at a table full of amazing food, it's and they're true. like, "All right, you got that one person is going way too long." And you're like, "Right, <laughs> come on, wrap it so, up, man." Let me ask you guys a question uh, for Thanksgiving table. What's the what's the one thing? What's your go to for Thanksgiving? What food? What is it? Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, by the way. Yeah. What I'd, is what is your thing? What is mashed potatoes, it's, man? Mashed potatoes, uh, buttery, buttery, buttery mashed, mashed potatoes. If it's not on the table, you're, it's not Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stuffing has got to be stuffing. stuffing. Yeah, yeah. stuffing is good. Yeah. Mine is pumpkin pie. My grandma used to make that, yeah. and then this one's kind of odd, but deviled eggs, love them. What? Yeah, I could eat like twenty. My of mom them. always made deviled eggs. I never got. My mom makes the best deviled eggs. Shout out to yeah. my mom. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but it was good, man. I, I can't. You can't have Thanksgiving without that, you know. My wife. I've never had my wife deviled eggs actually mastered it. once. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, never. My, my wife has mastered my mom's deviled eggs now, so it's it's good. First in our marriage, it was a little rough because she couldn't make them as well. Now she's mastered <laughs> oh, okay. it. Okay. Now she's got it. So shout We're out to my deeper. wife as well. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, that's what that's about cranberry subject. sauce? I've never had cranberry no. sauce at a Thanksgiving, but no. I always everywhere you look, it's like the cranberry yeah. is like a big jello. part of it. But yeah. I've never had it. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Like Dude, a casserole. Was it on your Thanksgiving no, dinner? No, never. No, or maybe I don't know. Yeah, my family's gonna watch this and be like, "We had it every year." <laughs> yeah. Cranberry. Well, you can always tell because either if they bought it in the can <laughs> and they out. took out the can bottom and they pushed it out. It's shaped it's like the can. It's, like it's got the ridges in it. It's got the ridges like, in the whole thing. You're like, that looks glorified great. Glorified jello. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. It's like casseroles. They're terrible. Um, yeah. That, that, those are great Thanksgiving memories, man. Yeah. It is busy, though. It is a busy time, a year. Um, you know, school stuff, mm -hmm. some businesses, you know, for you, families are doing stuff maybe at work and the kids plays and the kids parties. And then there's always church stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the question was, how do we not get exhausted from it? Um, what, what are some things we can do to not get exhausted? Um, <clears throat> I think one of the things that is super helpful is um, if you if you can pick a time to serve someone outside your family. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, when our kids were little, for a while, not very long, but for probably three or four years, we 
would get up early on Thanksgiving morning and we would go to the fairgrounds like at 6 or 6.30 because they had this huge community Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and hundreds of people would come. And we'd go there early and we'd spend probably two hours. But we'd crack eggs, hard-boiled eggs, peel them, peel potatoes, cut carrots. We'd never stay because we had to get back to our family thing. But taking a minute to serve someone outside of your family reminds you of the reason for the holiday. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so a way to not get caught up in, in all of the chaos of it um, and to remind ourselves is focus on someone outside of your family for a couple hours. That's a great yeah, point you make because what's interesting about it is that there is a, there's a theme about the holidays, which is exactly what you're saying, to be focusing on things outside of ourselves. But there's also that commercial element mm -hmm. that just wraps us all up in not living that way at all. It's like the season that we hear, you know, good tidings and, you know, it's the season that we hear th uh, sentiments like that the most is a season where we're not, we're doing those things the least, yeah. <laughs> typically. Yeah. You know, which is, I'm thinking about what am I going to get Christina? Because, you know, if, if her gifts aren't $500 or less, she won't even open it. You know, I'm just kidding. That's, that's a joke, everybody. That's, she's very, very nice. Oh, we're going to in trouble today, man. We need to stop talking about the wife. I know. I'm, I'm just kidding. But no, you know, it's, there's so much, I think our society, our culture has established the, the holiday season as there's so much to be thinking about the expectation wise in terms of like, um, how we interact with like family and work and you know that, that it seems pretty universal at least in America where people like there's like a holiday exhaustion mm -hmm. you know by the time it's over and the sentiment of the mm -hmm. holiday what you're saying is, is the opposite of that so it's mm -hmm. like how do we find especially in a biblical context like you know how do we you know endure the holidays in a sense where it we're actually getting out of it what the holidays are meant to be or the messaging that the holidays have, which is peace and joy and, mm -hmm. you know, glad tidings, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's a great point of like going back to what the holidays are actually biblically meant to be, which is, you know, good about Jesus, you know, and extending, you know, the, your <coughs> focus outside of your own self and what your own expectations of the holidays. Um, yeah, I think it's a great point. I think those yeah. things are good to teach your kids too. I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I know my my son went a couple of years ago with a, a group of people, and they went uh, to the gathering in and kind of did the same same thing. And even yeah. this summer, you know, not Thanksgiving, but we took the kids to L.A. and they fed homeless. And it was, I mean, the memories that they make and the things that they learn, and they see that yeah, it's not all about me because it, it it is easy for us to get into that trap of mm -hmm. the holidays and, and the selfishness that comes and you know when we want something on our list and when we don't get it you know we get upset or whatever and uh but it, it is good to kind of turn that attention back to serving other people yeah you know so, yeah i think a, another good idea would be like to like before it all begins like uh you know october we're in October now, so October, let's get out our November and December calendar. And before it starts filling up, put a big X through three or four days um, and and just say these three or four days. And they don't have to be consecutive, but just pick three or four days in November and December where you're not doing anything. Like you, you're, you're just going to have a day of rest. Mm -hmm. Um, and if somebody asks you to do something, you can say, sorry, I already got some plans for that day. I can't make it. You know, it always reminds me of the Feast of Booze, which is my favorite feast in the Old Testament. And it was basically camping for a week. And um, your family was asked to get out of the house and go camp, put up a tent, mm -hmm. live in the tent for seven days. And on the walls of your tent, you were asked uh, in, the, in, the fest, in the feast laws to hang up things that reminded you of God's goodness of the year. So they were to hang up some of their fruit, some of their harvest, some things that reminded them of God's goodness through the year. Um, and so during the holidays, we can do the same thing. Take a couple of the days, you know, maybe the day before Thanksgiving or the day after or the Saturday before Christmas or just some days that you're just going to stop yeah. um, and you're just going to rest and just uh, have some time to reflect yourself on what the Lord has done. But you got to do it before it all starts, because if we just let calendar happen, it'll fill up every single day. Right. So, so. essentially, too, what you're, you're saying is, you know, establishing boundaries. Yeah. You know, because there's 
always things going on that that you can be a part of in places even church events you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. we, you know every church you know typically during the holidays we offer you know a number of things but we ne never at the expense of you know your your sanity in the sense if you have so much going on it's incumbent upon you to honestly set boundaries in your mm -hmm. life so that way you're not overexerting yourself mm -hmm and able to focus on the goodness of God mm -hmm. throughout the season, because the season is, it is Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. about Jesus. We're celebrating, mm -hmm. you know, the birth of Christ and all that entails, which is mm -hmm. God's goodness, God with us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is interesting how our culture has designed the one time a year where we're supposed to focus even more on Christ, and we just get bombarded <laughs> with Christmas parties, Christmas mm -hmm. outings, Christmas shopping, yeah. You know, and so many things just eat up our lives and mm -hmm. they're all technically fun things, you know, and things that I throughout the year I think about like, oh, man, like Christmas, I can't wait for Christmas again. But then I kind of resonate with this lady, with this, with this person saying, too, of like, you reach that point where like, man, I've heard this Christmas song probably a yeah. thousand times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think, and I think it's, you know, not just for holidays. It's a good principle in, in life in general. Right, right? yeah. The, it's not just holidays the, that you're busy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. schedule mm -hmm. time to... You know, just be still. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people are busy. We're all busy. Mm -hmm. We all have, we can all fill up our calendar with things, but being intentional to just pause and rest. And, you know, I, I love to, I mean, I may be a weirdo. We all kind of know that, but <laughs> I like to schedule things out. You know, I schedule you know, my day out by hour increments. And that may seem a little extreme to some, but like a lot of time it's like spend time with your wife, spend time with your kids, you know, and, and but to put those things down so that we actually do that. And I think yeah. that, you know, not only serving other people, but taking time to rest during the holidays, uh, because you, you look at people by the, by the time Christmas is over, people look so frazzled and so worn out, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it's good to kind of pause and, and spend time and just be still as a family mm. and, and take that time together. Yeah, and I think too you you have to choose who you're going to disappoint. I mean, there's the the busyness creates uh, you know choices that I have to make, and somebody's going to be disappointed, um, and so you have to disappoint. Not that you're disappointing people to be mean, but disappointing the right person. I mean, the priorities obviously are God and family and and close friends, but but we're going to get all kinds of requests. Um, and we want to make sure that if we have to disappoint somebody, we disappoint the right person. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to disappoint. You know, I'm the middle child, so I like being the peacemaker and I mm -hmm. like pleasing everybody. But you just have to learn that sometimes um, you're going to disappoint people because you say, I can't make it or I mm -hmm. can't do that. Or, um, and it's okay. Sometimes you just, so choose who you're going to disappoint. And don't be hurt because you're disappointing people. Um, you know, the, the part you're talking about serving other people, another thing that came to my mind is during the holidays, maybe even look for uh, people that you know in your life that maybe uh, they've lost a spouse or they don't have family that's near. I know a couple of years ago, uh, some of our family invited someone that they knew didn't have anyone to spend the holidays yeah. with. And, yeah. and it kind of brings things back in perspective. It makes yeah. you cherish your family and, yeah. and not take that for granted because I mm -hmm. think so many times in life we take for granted that we have mm -hmm our parents here mm -hmm. or that we have, mm. you know, siblings, whatever. Mm. And I think mm -hmm. by, by looking to do something like that, maybe mm -hmm. someone in your church or community mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe recently lost someone mm -hmm. and um, just inviting them, Hey, come have Thanksgiving meal with us or come spend Christmas with us. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. And I think going along with that too, is that personal connection with people. Um, make sure that, you know, today it's really popular to, order your Christmas cards online and get your signature printed on the inside and get the envelopes printed on the outside and then have the company actually mail it to them. Um, and it's like, there is something about writing out a Christmas card, like dear Bob and Mary, love you guys. Hope you have a great year. Just like what you're saying, it reminds us of like, look at this stack of friends that God has given to me, stack of relationships. Um, uh, so make that personal connection with people. Um, yeah. Don't just don't just go to the crowds. Uh, make that personal connection with people yeah. uh, by having them over or, or writing some write write out 10 Christmas cards yourself 
and address them and write in them and it, it, it does does something for you it reminds yeah. you of that because when you get busy i mean like honestly like i know for me when i get busy and schedules packed and a lot of things going on i can tend to get a little cranky mm-hmm. okay and then i yeah, get I've, cranky I've seen that side. <laughs> <laughs> you get cranky with the ones that you love the most yeah and those holidays uh-huh. are supposed to be like mm-hmm. the times where you're like yeah you know you want to have this joyous like picture perfect christmas where everybody's opening up presents mm-hmm. and you're Wearing sitting by the fire sweaters. yeah and uh it, it turns different than that because you're on edge mm. and you maybe say something sharp to your yeah. kids. And mm. this is really a confessional time for me right now, guys. So uh, <laughs> we can just keep the cameras rolling and I'll yeah. just keep going for a while. But no, I'm serious. Let's dig know? deeper. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. go keep on. Going. Let's peel back the layers, guys. Um, but I don't know. For me, that, that's one of the things because the, the busyness of holidays can lead me to having a shorter fuse with the people that I love. Totally, and, yeah. And uh, then I end up saying something I regret or, or acting a way that I don't want to. And um, so I think that's why those times of just pausing and really reflecting on what, what we're doing, why we're celebrating mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. keeping that in perspective. Yeah. Reasonable yeah. expectations, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. across the board, which will, you know, cause us to have to establish boundaries, mm-hmm. which can be uncomfortable in certain mm-hmm. situations, mm-hmm. you know, and then ultimately, like we talked about, like the reason for the season, you know, that's obviously it's, mm-hmm. it's a moniker, but it's, it's true. Like, you know, I, I'm reminded of, you know, Jesus in, in Matthew when he's talking about, you, you guys remember Martha and Mary, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the situation here is that they're, you know, they're hosting everybody in, in their, in their home. And Martha is running around getting everybody fed and keeping yeah. everything going. And then Mary is sitting at Jesus's feet, yeah. focusing on what Jesus is doing. And sometimes if I'm going to be conf- confessional, like sometimes I resonate with Martha yeah. in a situation where I'm just like, I'm running around doing all these things and you're just sitting here. Like, can you help me out here? And then, yeah. but Jesus in that moment was just like, no, 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 Martha, you know, Mary is choosing the right thing mm-hmm. and encourages Martha to do the same. It's just like those mm-hmm. things, there's time for those things mm-hmm. throughout the entire year, but you don't mm-hmm. always have me with you. You know, because Jesus says that. Yeah. And so it's it's important. And that and like you said earlier, like that goes throughout all the year. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of mentality of it's it's not just the, it's not just the holidays that we get busy. It can be any throughout throughout the year. And it's always the better thing to mm-hmm. be, you know, even if it causes because that would cause me anxiety sometimes to be like, oh, I'm going to put off things that need to get done for the sake of my own you know relationship with Christ, you know, because mm-hmm. then I'm worried about like. You know, what are, what are the people who expect me to get things done? What are they going to think? Yeah. You know, are they going to be valuing my decision to put some of these things on hold, you know, for the sake of my walk with Christ? You know, and thankfully we work at a church with you guys who I know that you guys would expect, you know, and the elders here expect us as pastors and mm-hmm. leaders to be making sure that we're choosing the right thing and, mm-hmm. you know, discouraging us from overexerting ourselves to the point where we're, we're losing our minds. Yeah. and. Mm-hmm. You know, because obviously the holidays bring that, you know, on their own, but it's choosing the better thing, which is sitting with the anxiety that Martha would probably have to sit in that moment of like things aren't going to get done. You know, she's more focused. I could be more focused on like, oh, man, I'm going to disappoint somebody. You know, I don't want to disappoint someone by not coming to their holiday events. Mm -hmm. So I put myself in there and oh, well, these things should be getting done. And so I put myself in there and then the the reason for the season is is not getting my attention mm-hmm. at all because I'm so focused on everything else about it. And it's, um, I think it's a biblical principle that we could apply certainly in the holidays. Um, yeah, and I think it's a really good idea, again, to take your November, December calendar and pencil in or pen in your uh, merry moments, yeah. um, you know, and like... Uh, pencil pencil those in figure out what that is going to be we all have we all have to make christmas and thanksgiving fresh again yeah um because it's it's there's no new information okay it's 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 the bible and the bible's information about christmas is the same every year Mm -hmm. so we have to make it fresh for us and the only way to do that is to have merry moments where i'm just getting away and it's just me and the lord so but schedule those in yeah you know take that calendar and being aggressive about it Um, we can use that to call each other out in the office like you're being such a martha right now you are martha (laughs) you little martha let's see some mary let's see some mary from you let's get mary around here yeah yeah 
Yeah. Um, I actually do have a question that that's going to flip this. You know, obviously the, the the question that was posed is, you know, talking about how busy we can get, but I don't think that's everybody's experience hmm. during the holidays. I think mm -hmm. some people, you know, maybe the holidays mm -hmm. aren't as busy as they they like to be, or maybe yeah. there's you know the holidays remind them of an absence yeah. or a time where they used to have a lot going on and. You know, maybe life circumstances have brought them to a place where maybe the holidays are really a lonely mm -hmm. time for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's if we can flip this question on the on the reverse, like how could we, you know, encourage or give advice to somebody who maybe the holidays is the opposite in the sense of that's maybe the loneliest time of year for them instead of mm -hmm. the busiest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's certainly true in our family because my mother passed away a couple of years ago and she was really the holiday queen. Mm -hmm. You know, she's the one that called everybody, organized most of the events. Uh, a lot of times it was in their home and it was decorated very nicely. Um, so there's a real gap there. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same. Now, we, we're, it's not lonely because we have so many other people, but it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a couple of things, that's a, that's a really good point because I think there are a good group of people that are lonely and hurting during the holidays. Um, you know, one is talk about it, um, mm -hmm. it, it, how you're feeling is real and, and what you're experiencing is true. Um, and it's a season that you're walking through. And so just admit it that I'm lonely. I'm alone. Um, I don't like it. This is where God has me right now. Um, not trying to hide it or cover it up. Certainly, we don't want to cover it up with bad habits. Um, to, to try to squelch that feeling, mm -hmm. but admit the feeling. And then um, there are people in your life that have the same feeling that either can, can ruminate with you, can talk through with you, can encourage you. Um, there are people that see you. There are people that want to help you. And don't isolate. Um, yeah. There's a difference between being alone and isolation. Um, I isolate as me doing it to myself. Being alone is just a situation of my life. Um, and, and so take advantage as much as you don't feel like it when people invite you or you have the opportunity to go to an event, go. It is awkward, but you'll be surprised what God does there. He'll connect you with somebody. He'll, he'll heal your heart a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so talk about it, but, but don't isolate. Um, in that time no i think that's good the isolation part i think is the hardest part because you can tend to want to recluse back because it mm -hmm. is such a hard moment and my heart goes out to people that have mm -hmm. that are alone for holidays and uh you know if there's things that are going on in community areas like within your church try to get plugged in with those and that, that goes mm -hmm. back to what i was saying earlier you know and i think it's good for us as individuals and families to look and be intentional is there someone who yeah is in your church or in your circle that is alone that has gone through a, a hard time because you know for some people when it, holidays come this is the worst time of year for some people yeah they they just they dread it and yeah. you know i think we need to be looking for ways that we can help make it a little bit easier it's not going to make it better it's not going to mm -hmm. make it yeah. like it was but make it mm -hmm. somewhat better mm -hmm. for for mm -hmm. people and yeah. um you know, I think as a church and as individuals, we can do a yeah yeah better job at that. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. that goes back to what you said about Thanksgiving. Intentionally inviting somebody from outside of your family over reminds you of the real reason of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Just always focusing every opportunity, putting the emphasis and the focus on on Jesus, whether it's the holidays or not. But yeah, obviously, there's times when we're reminded more of, of our loneliness or more of, you know, difficult things and the holidays can be a really triggering, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. time for people. Mm -hmm. And even then it's the same thing of just like mm -hmm. focusing on the Lord and then like, but the Lord calls us to be in community, you know, mm -hmm. not to be isolated. And mm -hmm. it, sometimes isolating feels like the right thing because you don't want to be reminded of things that are really causing you pain, but that mm -hmm. isolation, you know, it's, it's a tool of the enemy. It can hurt, you know, because yeah. the enemy wants to isolate you, and that's when he yeah. has you in the palm of his hands, which is when, when you're isolated and you you have no accountability, you know, you have no one who has any kind of um, say or or view into your life, which means like it's a breeding ground for you know ways to to heal that pain or not heal the pain, but to to push it down or to ignore it. 
which is pretty much always a negative yeah. type of um, of thing. And, so, if you, and if you do have family, I think it's good to to stop and just just be grateful for what God has yeah. for you. Like mm-hmm. sometimes we just take it for granted mm-hmm. who we have around our table, yeah. who's in our house, crazy yeah. uncles and all, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just really just pausing and saying, God, thank you for my mom, my dad, mm-hmm. my brother, my sister, my kids. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, because it does put it in perspective because a lot of people may not have that, may not have that mm-hmm. around their table or in their house. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we, and when we start to reflect that, when we start to push and look at like how thankful and how grateful we should be and how much God has blessed us with, it can take that focus off of us mm-hmm. so much and just like, God, mm-hmm. you're awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can always be expressing a heart of gratitude to, towards God when we, Pause for a moment and, and think, you know, like I like the, the, was it the, the festival of, of booths, mm-hmm. um, you know, where it's deliberate in the sense of focus solely, I, I isolate from the distractions of your, of your life and focus solely on what God has, mm-hmm. you know, take, like take inventory, mm-hmm. you know, like search throughout, like inventory of mm-hmm. God's faithfulness. And, you know, if you're honest and you're humble during that process, like you will find a lot of things, mm-hmm. you know. In our families, even though during the holidays they can be crazy, they can be yeah. weird, they can drive us crazy, you know, that might be the last time you ever see them. And that might be the last Thanksgiving you ever have. And then, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's interesting when you have the next holiday after someone's passed. Yeah. And you realize yeah. kind of what you, what you had. Yeah. And you, you'd yeah. almost wish that yeah. they were there being nuts. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that festival sounds really good, except the camping experience for a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys, let's keep that indoors. Weird. Yeah, feels all about camping, <laughs> yeah. not me. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting too. Every year, uh, Ruthie and I like to watch a couple movies, and we try to always watch them before Christmas Day. And a lot of times, we're up late Christmas Eve watching one of them. But um, A Wonderful Life is on the short list of mm. movies we tr- I try to watch every year. And I think the premise, you know, of George Bailey getting the opportunity to see if he had never been born, how what a difference it, the people around him would have been. And it just reminded George Bailey that he impacts other people. Mm-hmm. And talking about, you know, people that are lonely, that are hurting, uh, I don't want them to forget that they really do impact people. Mm. And they do really do have a good influence. And as hurting as they are and as lonely as they are, um, they are influencers. God has them here because there are people that he can influence. And isolation is dangerous for a lot of reasons. But one of them is I lose the opportunity to make that influence. So find somebody to influence. Uh, Find somebody to connect with over the holidays because your life really does matter. Uh, No matter how alone you feel, no matter how low you feel, your life really, really matters. And it's it's. uh, it can make a mark on other people's lives. Don't ever forget that. And there, yeah. there are things I, you know, I know that even here at the church, like during the holiday season, there's the, the grief uh, share that yeah. they do during the holidays, yeah. you know, to help people who are, who are dealing with the loss of a loved one or right. uh, feeling alone during those times. And, right. and that's, I think that's great because I would encourage anybody who is listening that maybe wants to find connection yeah. to, you yeah. know, reach out to the church or, uh, you know, and get more information about that because that's a great a circle to be in. Yeah. You know? Now that's a great, that's, that's a wonderful one day workshop, seminar, whatever you want to call it on uh, grieving during the holidays, help for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's a one day event here and it's always maxed out. However many participants we can fit, that's how many come because there's a lot of people and it's great to come to a group like that mm-hmm. and to get help and support. Good stuff. Yeah. Great stuff, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's it for today. I think we're wrapped up on the holidays here. Yep. And we are getting ready here to get into this season. Yeah. So this is good we're for excited. us to talk about, too, even for our own, to, to make sure that I'm, you know, choosing the better thing throughout the, the temptation that I'm going to face for sure, that we're all going to face in the holiday season, which is going to be, you know, doing everything here and trying to do everything with our friends and family. And so let's be in prayer for each other and we'll be praying for you guys. And Um, We'll enjoy the season together. Amen. Ready to go. Amen. All right. We'll see you guys next time. God bless you.